It's Wednesday, September 21st here at the West End Gun Club. It's about 6.20, sun is starting to come out. I mean, days are getting shorter, summer's almost over. It's starting to cool down. It's oh, it cooled down significantly last week, but it's supposed to heat up again in Southern California. Probably gonna hit 100 on like Sunday or Monday, which is sad. But I think it's just gonna be a, a very short spike in the temperatures and it should be back down to the 80s by the end of next week. Anyway, uh, if you can see behind me, I'm actually on the main line here at the West End Gun Club. This is just the standard 100 yard range. I don't really shoot here very often because I, I always shoot rimfire as of late and whenever I shoot centerfire, I use the, the upper ranges, but the upper ranges are closed today because it's Wednesday because the rimfire range is open. Anyway, I'm gonna do some stuff here on the main line for a little short while, then we'll head over to the rimfire range and do a little bit more drills. And I'm just gonna check on a few things for the match, which is going to happen this weekend on Sunday. Anyway, let's go ahead and get a uh, target set up so we can start shooting. I came to the main line this morning because I wanted to shoot a center fire off of five different bipods. I've got several bipods now that I have yet to do any sort of written comparison on. I really want to, but I just haven't had the time to. One of them was the Thunder Beast Arms, or is the Thunder Beast Arms uh, bipod, which I received late last year, 2021. And I've had it on a, on a different rifle for a while. I think I had it on my Six Creedmoor, my Mousing Field. But I never really talked about it. And I recently acquired the MDT ground pod or GRND POD, which actually is right here. And I just acquired this from Brownells. And interesting fact, I was going to get one of these just to try it out. This is their kind of MDT's budget bipod compared to their Scott pod. And I was going to acquire this after I saw it at SHOT Show 2022. But the reason why I decided not to get one is because they only, they were only producing them in either a Picatinny clamp or an Arca clamp of their own design. And if you've seen some of these manufacturers coming in with their own Arca clamps, their Arca clamps are kind of, you know, chintzy. They're, they don't have much engineering in the levers and they just seem really bulky. 
And then um, last week, I noticed Brownell sent out an email talking about ground pods. And then they said they had it in the ARMS 17S interface, which is basically the same interface you found on Atlas bipods, the T-Back, and a few other bipods. And what that really means is that you can use any clamp that will fit an ARM 17S interface, specifically Relight stuff. Really Red stuff makes their own ARM 17 compatible clamps. And I have already owned those and uh, I still bought another one for this one because I want to have different, you know, individual clamps for each bipod because, you know, you don't want to, you know, take them off on to move it to a different bipod when you need to use that bipod. Anyway, since the MDT, uh, Brownells and MDT, I guess it's a Brownells exclusive or something because it's not advertised on the MDT site, but the ground pod and the ARM 17S interface is available for Brownells. I saw it, decided to get one so I can actually use Arca, uh, a really right stuff Arca clamps. And uh, I like, this is the ARMS LR, which I think is going to be discontinued because they, in, they redesigned it to have their R lock, which is, uh, you'll have to go look it up. I don't want to really explain it too, in too much detail, but it basically has a pin in here to interface with their new system so that it won't move if your clamp becomes loose. It just locks into place, hence the R lock name. Anyway, the ARMS LR is like their older version or the original version. It's a, it's a quick release clamp, but it's both pick rail and arca rail in one clamp so i can use it i can use this bipod or this clamp rather on either pick or arca which is why i like really right stuff the only ones who do that actually i think does i don't know if area 419 they have their own clamp it's not a quick release but it's a it's a it's a lever it's a what's what's the term i'm looking for it's a knob a knob clamp i don't know if it uses it does pick if it does pick i think it does pick an arca but really right stuff's the only one i know that makes the quick release clamp quick release lever clamp with both Arca and Pick in one, one clamp design. Anyway, so I got this and I wanted to test it out. I'm gonna write a review on this. I'm gonna write a review on the T-Back, which is right here. This is the Thunder Beast Arms bipod. And it's actually pretty nice. And it's got its own features that are unique to it. If you can see here um, on camera, this has got the Really Right Stuff knob version of their uh, ARM 17S compatible uh, clamp. This fits on an ARM 17 interface. It's pick rail and arca rail compatible, but it's just a, it's a knob as opposed to lever release, which is quicker. And knobs are, you know, if you want knob versus uh, lever release, I prefer lever release because it fits in uh, tighter, you know, tighter situations because if you have a wide forend, the knob might actually interfere and it will hit the forend and you won't be able to use your, your clamp. So quick release is a little bit lower profile in that regards from the vertical, but knobs are better in terms of being able to interface with, with any sort of rail that is out of spec. Because you have to understand that really right stuff is not really Arca, true Arca, because Arca is a brand name. And really right stuff made their own, they have their own dimensions. It's like a 1.5 inch dovetail. And if you've ever seen other manufacturers like Kirk Enterprises, because I, you know, I was, I shoot photography, um, and I was using Arca on that be long before I was using them on rifles. But um, Kirk, like Kirk Enterprises, I think there's Acrotech, they're in Southern California. They all have slightly different dimensions on their dovetails. And so they make their own clamps, and their own clamps are going to fit their own dovetails. I know Acrotech, though, theirs is adjustable, so you can adjust their, their lever release clamps so that it'll, it'll interface with other Arca rails of different dimensions. Um, but if you don't want to deal, if you don't want to have to worry about that, I think knob style clamps are better because it doesn't matter if it's wider or narrower than spec, your, your knob clamp is going to clamp onto it. Uh, within reason, of course, if it's way out of spec, it's really too narrow and it won't fit your knob clamp, then yeah, that's a problem. But that's, uh, I mean, knob and lever have their own, uh, strengths and weaknesses. I, I just prefer lever if I can get it, but it's more expensive too. Knob clamps are cheaper to make. Or um, I assume they're cheaper to make, but they're 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 less expensive uh, if you want to buy one. Uh, anyway, so yeah, these are like the newest bipods that I have that I haven't really put through its paces, but definitely want to write about. It. I've had the T back for almost a year now, and I've just got the MDT ground pod uh, this just this past week, or well, this week it's Wednesday. Um, I got it on Monday. Did I get it Monday? I got it on Friday. Friday, Monday, Friday, Friday, and then I got the clamp on Monday. Anyway. Um, I already put some rounds down range on the main line. I'm gonna go ahead and pack it in and then we're gonna head over to the rimfire range and do some, a little bit of practice and then we'll talk a little bit more about, a little bit more about bipods.
I neglected to mention the rifle that I was shooting earlier this morning when I started this range session, and it is my Remington 700 police model in 308. Factory barrel, factory action, 26 inch, uh, one in 12 twist. And if you're wondering why it's in a BA comp chassis as opposed to the KRG Bravo chassis that you may have remember seeing it in previous vlogs, it's because I just took it out and put it into this BA comp. The BA comp, this is my BA comp that my Voodoo was sitting in. My Voodoo is right here. It now sits in the Matrix Pro chassis. This BA comp chassis has just been sitting around in the house doing nothing. So I thought about, hey, why don't I just throw my 308 in it just to, just to shoot my police model in the BA comp. I like the KRG Bravo chassis and actually balances well with this um, barreled action. And this one with the weights added, it balances about the same. So my KRG Bravo chassis is actually going to be a lighter gun for this barreled action. And yet it balances just as well. So I'll probably keep it in that, uh, keep it in that, uh, in that chassis. Uh, and plus I didn't really, my plan for this chassis, to be honest, was to just get another Voodoo. I was probably going to get a 22 inch Voodoo 360, put that in either this or the Matrix Pro, and then, you know, just switch whichever version or whichever action I want in whichever chassis. But I'm not going to get rid of the BA Comp. I think the BA Comp is a great chassis, to be honest. Uh, and at the time when I purchased it, you know, you could get them for under $1,000. And for that price and what you were getting, I thought it was a tremendous value. And especially when you're looking at ch chassis today, this is a $1,600 chassis for the Matrix Pro. The KRG C4 just came out. I think that's $1,900. I, I could be wrong, but it's it's close to $2,000. And uh, yeah, chassis are starting to get really expensive. Uh, but the BA Comp I'm going to keep. I'm not going to sell it. Um, I'm going to probably put the 700P back into my KRG Bravo chassis, which I also think is a great chassis. And that's a great chassis for the money. Chassis slash stock. I mean, it looks like a stock, but they call it a chassis. I I think it's a great value. I think you're getting them for about 400 under that, and yeah, it's it's really good to be honest. Uh, it's hard to you know if you're if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend beyond five or six hundred bucks, uh, you should look at the Carriage Bravo, especially if you're running you know a 700 pattern action. They do make them for 1022s, which my 1022 sits in one. Uh, they make them for other rimfire. It's a great versatile, lower cost uh, option. Anyway, let's talk about bipods. I said we'll talk a little bit about bipods, but I, I wanted to spend more of the vlog on this because that's why I came out to this range session, just to get some footage and just to get my opinions on these, uh, at least uh, the T-back and the MTT ground pod. Anyway, I got five bipods here. My, the tried and true Harris bipod, which I have here, this is SBRM, which is their six to nine inch tall model. It's actually probably one of their shorter ones. And uh, this is kind of the tried and true one. Everyone uses the, well, everyone. Everyone who started earlier on in precision rifle, quote, quote unquote, precision rifle shooting, pretty much everyone was running a Harris, especially in the early 2000s. Uh, it's, again, it's a, it's a pretty good bipod. It's uh, lower cost. You can get them for a hundred bucks usually, especially when they're on sale. And then uh, I have this, uh, it's traditionally in a swivel clamp. So you, it, it attaches to a swivel sling stud. Unfortunately, uh, most rifles nowadays don't have that if you're buying a modern precision rifle and you're either going pick rail or Arca. And so you're going to have to get an adapter for that. And I think they started making them, they started making the, I think they started making Harris bipods with pick rail clamps, I think. I know they have one for M-Lock, you know, they have an M-Lock attachment, which I don't really care for, uh, for a bipod, but I know they're releasing that. I saw it at SHOT Show. Anyway, SBRM tried and true Harris bipod. Now, an upgrade from that, most people, when they're trying to upgrade, they're going with the Harris, or sorry, the Atlas. And Atlas bipods were like kind of the next next thing to come out after the Harris. And when people were switching to the Harris bipods, sorry, I'm just trying to swap bipods here. Let me get this gun on some a kickstand here. Bear with me. There you go. So anyway, what I was saying is, Atlas, Atlas bipods were kind of the next new thing. And this is probably now the de facto kind of de facto standard as far as a good higher, higher tier bipod is the Atlas. There's different, there's different models. The, uh, the original versions come in a pan version along with cant. So cant means you can go side to side on the, uh, you know, the axis there. And then panning is if you need to, to rotate to change your angle on the vertical plane. Anyway, uh, I have a Atlas Cal, which is not a cant 
it only or sorry it doesn't pan it cans only and again this is kind of the tried and true they 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 have them in pick rail versions but typically you'll buy them with the B, the arms 17 interface which is kind of become a standard with bipods now because the ARMS or ARMS 17S, there are several manufacturers who make clamps that connect to that. So I bought it without a clamp, this Atlas Cal, and then I attached a really red stuff. This is the ARMS LR clamp. I originally put the, I uh, can't remember what this is called. I think it's called the BTC Pro, but this is the ARMS clamp, or sorry, the uh, really red stuff ARMS knob clamp that also fits, you know, ARMS 17S. Originally got this, then they released the, the lever release version. Anyway, that's what you see here. Atlas Cal, I think it's also good. I can't recall what the, the height is, but it is, I think it's slightly, I think it's about the same as the six to nine SBRM. Uh, it might be a little taller, I think it goes to 10, but I'll have to look up those specs because I can't recall. It uses a standard, uh, I think it says KMW Podlock. Yeah, it's a KMW Podlock um, to adjust the, the pan. And just to quick go back to the Harris, the Harris does not come with a cam, uh, the Cam W pod lock. You have to add that yourself. It comes with a, a generic knob, which you really can't tighten very well. So it's nice to have these, the Cam W pod lock because it gives you a lot of leverage. It's just basically a lever. Okay, I'll do the Atlas Cal, which or the Atlas or the Atlas Cal, which I have here. Then you're getting into the more of the other bipods that have come out. So I don't have a, the, another popular one now is, is AccuTac, which I do not own. Frankly, the reason why some guy on the main line. The reason I don't own an AccuTac is because I'm not a fan of their clamps. As I mentioned earlier, I prefer to have my own clamp. Um, I want to reuse really right stuff clamps. And I think really right stuff makes the best clamps because I want to use Arca and pick. Anyway, um, as far as bipods are concerned, uh, other than the AccuTac, t back came on the scene uh, six or seven years ago. I can't recall. The Thunder Beast Arms uh, bipod, this has become... It was, it, I don't say when it became popular, but it became pretty renowned because it was sort of something that people like, they preferred that it kind of had the features of a Harris in terms of the spring loading because the, uh, the legs are spring loaded and you just hit this knob to push them out, punch them out and they're notched. So you can adjust the, uh, adjust the height, uh, with a little bit of, uh, granularity there. And it does have the sort of leg mod leg adjustments like a Atlas. So the Harris, um, it's basically spring loaded. You can't adjust the the leg angle on a Harris. It's just going to be either 90 degrees or zero, you know, 180 or just straight out. Whereas the Atlas allows you to adjust the angle of the legs. So you don't have to go fully down. You can go to 45 degree or down or you know zero degrees. I guess if you want to call it that way. Uh, T-back does the same thing, allows you to adjust the angles. Well, actually, no, it does not. It, it's only straight out. So um, it just has the, uh, it's not a spring-loaded design, rather. That's what I was going to say. Sorry, there it is. I thought it was, it thought it angled out. But anyway, it does angle out on on the leg. So anyway, T-back kind of, uh, kind of liked by, uh, by many. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a solid design. And uh, they have their own kind of cant lock here. It's their own lever, so it comes with that. I have no real complaints about it. I've shot a little bit in the past year. I got this for free. I won it in the drawing for the NRL 22 because I, you know, if you win an NRL 22 match, if you place high open, high base, or you're a highest in your class, they put you in a random drawing at the end of the month. I pulled my name. Actually, they were gonna. I got a suppressor certificate, but so in California or California, I can't own a suppressor, so. Thunder Beast Arms let me redeem it for a bipod, which is really cool because I can actually use the bipod. Anyway, uh, after side of that, um, then we get into this Skypod, which has kind of become the, the the new hotness in terms of. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust my leg there. Um, so I have the Skypod on my Voodoo, which is kind of my primary bipod. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to use my bipods as kickstands for my guns here. Anyway, Skypods have become the rage in terms of bipods. So these are quite a bit of expensive. Um, the Harris, like I said, is 100. Atlas is around 300 bucks, give or take, depending on the clamp. The T-Back, I think, is four. I can't recall. I'll have to look it up and, and post it in, the, uh, in a caption here. Then you step up to the Skypod, and these are now at... S I bought this at seven without a clamp, and I think now they're up to eight. 
or nine and they come with their own clamps so uh, this is the MDT uh, Skypod this is their Gen 2 single pull it's uh, it's very versatile compared to the these other iPods here like the uh, the previous ones I mentioned the Harris the Atlas and the t -back. this has a lot more versatility and adjustability for one you can adjust the width of the legs you can spread them out so you can either go narrow you can go mid-range or wide and you can adjust each leg independently of the of the other you can also adjust the angle to target or sorry the angle of the uh, the leg fore and aft so if you need to kind of uh, go forward sorry I'm trying to adjust it you can angle it down so it's not one it's not straight forward or straight down you can also do 45 degrees uh, another thing too is it's not spring loaded, so you just kind of just pull it out. You don't have to hit anything. You don't have to press a button or anything. You just pull the leg. Makes it for a faster adjustment to come down. Although to 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 retract it, you have to push a lever and push up. Uh, feet are are interchangeable. So the feet are interchangeable on all the bipods that I mentioned already. Uh, I think the uh, everyone's trying to adopt the Atlas standard, except for Harris. Harris is their own. It's a roll pin type thing, but. Uh, Harris, or sorry, Atlas compatible let, uh, feet are kind of what you want to go with because they're easier to swap out and they make a ton of them. So this has spiked feet on this one. That's what it came with. And uh, sorry, one other thing is it's, it's, it does pan and cant. So you can cant it, you know, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Cock it <laughs> side to side, I guess. And panning is to on the horizontal plane. So that's the vertical plane, I guess, and the horizontal plane. And it does can it does pan as well, but the thing is, it has a lockout, which is what I didn't like about the Atlas Atlas bipods wouldn't lock out the pan. So no matter how badly you locked it up, you tried to tighten the tension knob, it would still move if you put force on it. The Atlas, or sorry, the Skypod, you can pan it like you can see here. However, the uh, you can lock it out with this little pin here. It's just a lever, push up, and then it has a pin that drives up, so it will not move. So that's why I kind of like the and the MDT Skypod for that feature. And it's got a barricade stop, etc. And that's kind of it for the accessibility. And as far as clamps are concerned, it does support really right stuff, but it's not really right stuff uh, ARM17S. So that's kind of the weird thing. You can, most of the Skypods are gonna come with MDT's own proprietary clamps, either their pick rail or their ARCA rail clamp. The, I think this, the, the single pull, and I think one other version of the, of the uh, Skypod comes in what's called the Really Right Stuff interface. And it's now been deprecated. So if you've ever used Really Right Stuff ball head clamps, so ball heads rather, uh, for photography, uh, prior to 2018 or so, because I think they started phasing out that design, the clamp is actually keyed. It's got a cross key in it. And the reason why want, you want that on your ball head is because on the ball head stem, if you put a clamp on there and you were put a put a uh, torsional force on it, you don't want the clamp to screw, unscrew out, right? So some, some tripod manufacturers, they'll put set screws on their clamp so it sets on the ball stem. Although on the ball stem, you really can't do that. So, because there's no other place to put like a, kind of a, a set screw or anything for the, the clamp itself, because the ball stem is basically literally a stem. It's a small stem, and then you put the clamp there. And so it, it, it's threaded. But what really Rust Stiff did on their um, their ball head stems, like my BH55 has it, is it's key. It's got, I think it's got a cross key, if I recall. And so the bottom of the, the clamps have that interface. So you just place that clamp on top of that cross, and then there's it's threaded down in the center. And so once you screw it in, then it won't, it can't, move torsionally it won't unscrew itself on that threaded stud because it's keyed anyway what i'm trying to explain here is that this is keyed for that since really right stuff i think they've changed the design because i saw what they did with their latest ball stems they're they're it's like got this this ridged pattern and you have this bushing that goes in between and then it goes into the clamp got this weird interface anyway i think they went to that because they thought it was better now that they did that, I feel like they're no longer going to support this type of clamp anymore. They're going to stop making that clamp interface. And so um, for the bottom of the clamp, that key. And so MDT is probably going to stop making these, I think. I, I anticipate that. Which then leads us to, to, to go to what's happening here. So now let's get to this fifth bipod that I have here. And this is the MDT ground pod. 
MDT Ground Pod is the latest uh, bipod released by MDT. It's kind of a polymer and, uh, sorry, I think it's polymer, aluminum, and carbon fiber combined. Uh, Harris Bipod's aluminum, At and all the other ones here, the uh, Atlas, the T-Back, and the MDT are aluminum. This one has more polymer. And uh, this is their latest release. Came, they announced it at SHOT Show 2022. This one has the ARM17S is interface, which the T-Back and the Atlas both have. And so I think this uh, ARM17S interface, hopefully they'll start putting those on the Skypods because that will open the door up for using your own clamp as used, as opposed to using the clamp that MTT is going to provide. Again, I don't, I'm not really a fan of the clamps that most of these manufacturing bipod manufacturers are putting on their own bipods. I think Really Right Stuff and Area 419 have, I mean, they're doing the clamps better. So just let the other manufacturers do it for you and let the customer decide. Anyway, here, MTT Skypod, it's basically similar designs to, kind of has the features as others, and now there's a flyer B flying around me, sorry. Uh, has the other features, you know, combines features from other bipods. It's not spring-loaded. It does allow you to adjust the angle legs, 0, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. It's not a, it's not a spring-loaded design again. It's just a pull like the Skypod, and to retract, you just push that lever in. Uh, it's got a cant lock. This is not a KMW pod lock, it's a little bit longer, but it's basically the same like type of lever to adjust the tension on the cant. It does not pan. And uh, the legs, or the feet rather, are kind of this kind of rubber foot. They, I don't think it's, uh, they say it's compatible with, they say it's compatible with Atlas feet. However, they use a roll pin. I think they said it's yeah. They said it's compatible with Harris feet, and it looks like it is as far as the pin location. However, these roll pins are supposed to push pins, so it sucks to punch out a roll pin. Um, but yeah, this is the MTT ground pod. So far, I, I think it's a fairly decent design. Uh, it does has some rattle to it. Um, like the Harris does not rattle, which is what I like. Atlas does not really rattle. Um, the Skypod it definitely rattles a lot. I know a lot of people like this. This bipod is so versatile. However, with all the rattling it does, I don't know if it's good for the field. I mean, for hunting, do you really need all this noise? Um, the MTT has a little bit of loose tolerances there as far as the fit. And the, but the Atlas, what's, is, this is the clamp that's rattling rather, so let me hold the clamp lever. So that doesn't really rattle. So, I mean, you'll have to try those out to see what you feel about those. But I think the Atlas and the Harris probably have the least amount of noise that will create. And the the T-back does not create much noise either. It doesn't create any noise at all. Um, Anyway, those are the five five bots I brought out, and uh, these are all definitely expensive, comparatively speaking, except the Harris. I mean, Harris is still, again, $100 is kind of what people are wanting to spend on a bipod. That's why you see people buying those Magpul bipods, which I think are garbage. I don't own one, and frankly, I don't feel like buying one to try out, but I've, I've handled them, and I feel they're trash. And uh, I don't know why people want them, but hey, whatever. I mean, Magpul, they like the name. I mean, you see people buying knockoff Harris bipods. Um, you, they're... They're not really branded as Harris, but you know they, they're designed to look like Harris's. Uh, there's some knockoff, full-on knockoff atlases. you got to watch out for those. I haven't seen a knockoff Skypod. Um, if somebody can do it, <laughs> good for them. I'd, have to, I'd like to see it if they're able to, to reproduce the Skypod anywhere close to like the machining they do here. But this is incredible as far as machining. Um, anyway, it's kind of the bipod stuff. I know it's been long-winded here, but I mean, I just wanted to talk about bipods. Uh, in this vlog session, or sorry, this range session rather, uh, while I'm practicing. And if you're looking for a bipod for your gun, your, your options are limited if you're running sling swivel. You pretty much have to go Harris. You can try to adapt it though. You can try to uh, put a pick rail on your stock. Um, you can drill it out for it. There's several ways to do that. People have been doing that for a long time after the Atlas came out because Atlas does not support sling swivel studs. You have to go pick rail at least. Um, but if you can go Arca, gotta go Arca. Uh, you see all my bipods here are running Arca. There are Arca clamps plus pick rail because, I mean, I'm using really right stuff clamps because they're dual. But I need Arca because I run Arca on everything. I think Arca is the way to go if you're running precision rifle, anything. Um, plus it interfaces with bipods or tripods clamps because you're probably going to be running an Arca clamp anyway. And full length, again, you c having the full length uh, rail, Arca rail on your gun allows you to move the... Uh, Move the bipod wherever you want. 
I mean, along this along this section. So it's kind of the the cool thing about Arca Rails in terms of uh, interfacing attachments here. But anyway, that's kind of where we stand on the bipod stuff. And look for my review on the MTT ground pod. I'm gonna post a written review. Not really. It's just a mini review. Uh, I'm gonna try to you know try out this bipod a little bit more in terms of just not just straight prone, but I think this is a good option if you're looking for something lower cost. However, I just feel like it really $200 versus like 300 for an Atlas, why, why not just go to the Atlas? But I mean, the options are out there. You have a lot of choices, so do your research to make an educated decision. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of talking. I know a lot of people say, hey, why do you talk so much? Um, and to be honest, hey, I talk a lot in these range vlogs and these range sessions, I don't shoot all the time, right? To be honest, I mean, if you've seen me, if you if you ever uh, shot with me back in the day when I was shooting service rifle, I would only shoot 30 rounds in a range session, all standing, and that was it. And I would do that over the course of four hours, three hours. Because most of the time I'm talking to people, I'm, I'm taking breaks between my strings, and then I'm getting breakfast, you know, we get breakfast, eat, uh, breakfast, shoot, break, shoot, then go to lunch, and then maybe shoot a little bit more. So I'm shooting 30 or 40 rounds. That's it. Um, so that's kind of how my range sessions go. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and put up a couple targets up for rimfire. I want to shoot a little bit rimfire stuff, and then uh, we'll pack it in. All done with the range session, about to get out of here. Hopefully you got some good information about those bipods. I know I was speaking fast about the bipods. However, I'm going to have a write-up at least on the MDT ground pod and the T-back bipods soon. Uh, hopefully get those out before the end of the year. It's uh, September. Yeah, I should have them out at least in the next couple months. And I'm probably going to write up a comparison on bipods just for or a bipod selection article just for people interested or who are still looking for a, a bipod like how to like what to choose and, and why uh one last thing i want to mention before i get out of here this is the uh, the mub i don't know i've probably mentioned it and i've showed it off in a few range vlogs and some segments it's basically a glorified 
tack table with M block slots on it and a bunch of quarter 20 thread threaded holes. Uh, I've got some adapters on here. I got like an really right stuff micro ball head. I've adapted some Amazon special clamps on here and M lock attachments, a Magpul pick rail, just to come up with some ideas on how to utilize this thing because I kind of wanted this for an observation type platform. And you can see here I have my in a pure binocular here on the micro ball, but I have my Sig Kilo 6K, which doesn't have a way, well, it doesn't have a, a cool way or a good way to adapt to a tripod. There is a, there's a thread here for an adapter, which they have yet to release a tripod adapter for, but um, kind of the idea is you use your bag on here on, on a tack table and rest your binocular there if you need to, or any kind of optic on here, or your gun uh, for that matter. But anyway, this is the MUB. I'm gonna have an article on this pretty soon to talk about sorry i'm trying to move around here on the uh on the uh tripod here just so you can see it on camera but I'm trying to angle it for you basically kind of an idea of what i have here i have a kind of a fixed clamp i'll talk about this in an article but there's a lot of ways you can adapt this however it does cost money i'll just tell you right now the mub itself was like 150 160 bucks then all these adapters the the micro ball heads 140 so you're spending a lot of money just for something like this when you can probably just manufacture something yourself. That being said, I mean, it's coming up with an observation type table or a setup so you can have multiple things. Like theoretically, I could have a binocular here, my camera here, which you've seen. I could put a scope here because I have a pick rail. I can, I've got an M-lock pick rail here. I could put a scope if I wanted to, like on a one piece. Um, I can put another ball here. here. I could... Have my real, I can have my laser rangefinder set up, etc. I mean, there's versatility here that you can get. Granted, you're paying a lot for it um, in the grand scheme of things uh, when you when you add everything up. But I just want to talk about it. I saw it. I was pondering a tack table or a kind of an observation table set up for a tripod, and I selected this. I'm not saying this is probably the way. You, I don't. I'm not saying right now like you should or should not get it. I will just say it is a pricey, pricey project if you're going to do it and i'm hoping to have an article on the sig kilo 6k soon i've already got most of the write-up done and um i'm going to start doing a little bit more editing but i'll have an art uh write up on the sig kilo 6k hd compact laser range finding binocular 8 by 32s i'll have that out hopefully soon anyway that's it for today september i've looked at my watch the 21st september 21st wednesday here at the west end gun club Reminder is this Sunday uh, is our NRL 22 match. So if you're in the area, come out and shoot it. Registrations are still open, plenty of slots. Uh, but if I don't see you at that match, I'll see you in the next range vlog.